so it's really an honor to be here and talk to in front of people who actually really, really accidentally in, in invented and in, engineered the future in software. And as Sean indicated, some of my hardware colleagues might not say, let's move to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> that is louder than expected. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we say dark side? There is a very simple answer, because software is simply everywhere. It is almost like a virus in a very hidden a non-perceived manner and seamlessly running in every single device, in every single system, in every single also hardware. Of course, we do value the hardware research, but I thought today I can use the opportunity actually in front of this audience to give you a little bit of um, a history that some of you in the audience know much better than I do, um, but then also demonstrate you the um, journey that we have taken since then. Maybe you are curious about what we are doing since then, uh, the early days of Unix today. And we believe we are actually already work living and working in the future and also give you a little bit of an outline of how we envision the future. So let's start with why is software everywhere and how it started. What if I told you everything started with one guy who just wanted to play a game? He was interested in space and wanted to play a space travel game. As we all know, researchers are still like kids in candy stores. So at Bell Labs, he was at, in, like a kid in a candy store and looked into solutions on how this can be discovered. And with, with the given software systems back in those days, this was simply not possible. So what came out of this is the famous Unix that you have heard since yesterday multiple, multiple times. We have in the audience people who have actively contributed to that. That's an honor to speak in front of them. But basically, what Unix has done is revolutionized everything. The way we work, we live, we interact, we entertain. Because software, operation systems, changed fundamentally in their design. And what was it that changed so much? What was the unique features of Unix? Among multiple, multiple of them, it was basically these three key features and principle. Simplicity, modularity, portability. Simplicity in the sense that every single utility in an operating system was anticipated to execute only one function, one task. Don't make things complex and bulky. Modularity helped in its design that we introduce more flexibility into the operating system itself. Portability, on the other hand, actually helped us that software systems, operating system, became basically hardware agnostic and could run in def various different hardware environments and was no longer tailored, custom made for specific hardware. And it led, it was um, a coincidence that um, what came out through considering an implementation in a new programming language back in those days, C, which allowed for the fact that now um, this operating system software can run actually in every single of our devices. So that was what Unix was. And we, I would like to give you um, an overview of where we take it from there. But before that, I would like to give a little bit of um, and question um, and hint to the um, why the dark side. What is software systems, right, when it's running everywhere? Well, it's everything. <laughs> Basically everything but silicon. Um, and this um, salad of buzzwords basically demonstrates you how broad the field of software research could be. And what we do in, as a software and data systems research lab, which we claim to be the succeeding generation of the Unix group, is we actually have a quite good plan about what we want to do in this jungle of buzzwords. We want to have fun. We want to continue to have fun by valuing and honoring the Unix philosophy, but also by pushing its boundaries and being disruptive. Starting with these three principles, simplicity, modularity, and portability, we push it further and say simplicity shouldn't be only in its design, 
but it should be also simple for the end user. So consumability and ease of use is where we are stretching the simplicity. The modularity aspect we are extending towards elasticity and composability by design of the software. The portability which allowed us for, to run everything on various software, we are expanding to generalizability. Not only in hardware domain, but also versatile software design that can be applied to multiple different um, verticals and use cases. We are adding two more things here, scalability and trust. Scalability, you may imagine, we want to go global scale, we want to go to the space. Yes, scaling up is one dimension, but scaling down all the way to zero is another challenge that not a lot of people are looking at. Designing software system solutions that allow you for zero battery consumption, zero energy consumption is what we are targeting. We call it battery-less or energy-less. Trust is another uh, aspect that we consider in a highly fragmented heterogeneous ICT ecosystem where AI is so dominant, data owners, model owners, also infrastructure owners, how will they trust each other? We have certified trust solutions that can be verified by third parties for this. So let me show you for every single one of, of this an example. I talked about scalability. We have a solution, an AI-based solution. Today, actually, what um, we see is everyone is saying, you can only run AI if you own GPUs, if you have access to, to the GPUs or can afford it. But there is so much compute in the infrastructure in every single end user device, laptops, etc., that is underutilized or not utilized. We have created and democratized environment where every compute can be utilized by everyone who require, has AI workloads in a very democratic manner. So we are saying um, it should be AI by everyone for everyone. Um, what we also have is everyone is talking in the future you don't need to learn coding, don't waste your time to learn coding skills. We have today a solution that ha we have designed for elementary level kids that can play around and learn AI um, experiences, AI driven problem solving with no coding requirements for, um, in a, on a single cute de device robot that we called Bella. Everyone also is talking today about what do we do with the data centers? AI is raising all the data, uh, data is exploding. How can we manage this explosion? What will, will we do? How can we benefit from it? Here as, at Bell Labs, with this skill set rising from optical routers, which is the optical domain, IP domain, transport networks to data centers, as well as all the way from top down in the infrastructure from software, AI, based solutions, we actually have an integrated solution having a network awareness integrated into our decision making to find the most efficient resources for any workload, which improves the utilization and efficiency of compute and reduces actually the workload on the data center sites. Everyone is also talking in the future, everything will be done by agents. Today, we have agentic solutions and frameworks that are assisting us in every manner of our workday, um, homegrown solutions, be it for, for brainstorming, be it for meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we are utilizing this also to generate agentic frameworks that are intelligently making their autonomous decisions. Everyone is also talking about what about trust? You have heard it multiple times in this ecosystem. Today, we have solutions that help any stakeholder in the ecosystem providing data, models, infrastructure, resources, services to have trusted, verified certifications that are compliant with regulations throughout the globe. So and what we were able to do is demonstrate in this event of the centennial in Murray Hill, some of these demos, actually these are really kids from our team members playing around with our robot here. Um, I do hope you were able to visit these demos. If not, there is still opportunity today or tomorrow to stop by and, and check these out. Um, and question is, do we stop here? Of course not, because we want to have fun in Bad Labs, right? 
So what we envision is we want to disrupt the world further and go beyond these five dimensions and add three more complexities. What we call autogenous, hyperpersonal, and autodidactic. For the middle one, we couldn't find an auto term. <laughs> but autogenous is actually means we want to have software solutions for the infrastructure, for the hardware that generates itself, self-generating software for the physical world. Um, so we are attacking the hardware world and we're looking there how much can be abstract and virtualized there to make the hardware also lightweight. Would that help for the disaggregation of the physical infrastructure is one of the um, talk, um, thoughts there. Hyperpersonalization. Um, Peter mentioned in his um, brief introduction the sixth sense. Um, yes, we want software also to understand and sense every individual's needs, be it regarding services, be it regarding resources, etc. And this individual can be humans, these can be providers, these can be infrastructures, these can be services or applications, and have tailored solutions ad hoc on demand in an autonomous manner. Autodidactic is we are envisioning future services, uh, software systems um, to be capable of self-evolving, almost acting as an organic construct that can grow and shrink based on its own autonomy. So this is what we are envisioning and tackling today. Maybe not in the next centennial, but maybe in a few years we will have more disruptive re uh, results to show um, but by that, I want to say the future of this dark side software is what we believe actually very, very bright. With that, I really would like to thank my entire team, the Software and Data Systems Research Lab. Um, I would have had hundreds of names to add. This lab itself is 80 people, so bear with me that I didn't put it despite the big screen here, all names on them, but every single one is contributing to them this Thank you so much, the SDSR team in the audience. Thank you.